Okay, this is Roger once again, and I, again, I am a researcher. Please allow this on any format that it lays on. And it, all I am doing is presenting research information. It may point in one direction, it may point in another. These are the diff places where you have to make your own determination, but this is not to be just dismissed and not allowed. Please. Okay, my friends, Roger once again, another absolute day in unbelievable land. I've been talking about bacteria, and the bacteria in your gut makes enzymes. The enzymes make you healthy or make you sick. Case closed. Now, what else do they do? They can actually change the type of a blood cell from an A to a B and that type of thing. It's, that's amazing. I'm telling you, the more I dig into this, the absolute... It's just insanity. The key to changing a blood type may be in the gut. Enzymes made by bacteria in a human digestive tract can strip sugars that determine blood type from the surface of red blood cells in the lab, a new study finds, changing them from, look, this important is because these sugars or antigens, and I'll get into antigens and antibodies in a minute, but antigens are like addresses. They can cause devastating immune reactions if introduced into the body of someone without that particular blood type. So the, the addresses of these enzymes are going to the wrong place and apparently the enzyme itself, which is the antibody, attacks something it shouldn't attack and kills you. A few enzymes discovered in the past can change type B blood to type O. But the newly discovered group of enzymes are the first to effectively change type A to type O. This is just unbelievable. I, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It's the microbiome. that It, it controls every single thing about you, 100%. Every molecule that comes in your body has to be dealt with, and your gut deals with them. The digestive tract, wherever they run through your body, has to touch them, break them down, convert them, destroy them, fix them, or do something to them to make them usable in your body or not invasive in your body or else just benign in your body. And if you don't have those bacteria, you're done. It's as simple as that. The elegant chemistry that they put out is so unbelievable that it's just incredible. And they do it just like that. These catalysts do within a click of a finger, they do more chemistry than can be done in 100 years by the natural process. Absolutely amazing. And you can be cured just like that, and you can die just like that. Depends on what the chemistry is in your body, what you have to fight against the chemistry that is invading your body. It is really, really, really simple. You have to have the correct bacteria and the correct microbiome, and then you're just gonna go on about your life. Okay, there's no easy way to ease into this. Everything in chemistry and biology is wrong. <laughs> Gene expression is not necessarily related to the gene. The gene expression, which creates a chemistry to deal with glioblastomas and cancers and all kinds of invasive molecular degradation of tissues, which is these genes have to become expressed to create a molecule to go and deal with this invasive chemistry. Basically that's it. Now, whether it's an invasive molecule that's some kind of toxin or and it's not biological or it's an invasive molecule that is a living invasive molecule that has to be dealt with to, and, and killed they still do the same thing these are your white blood cells they uh, they break down food for you they go and in attack invaders they break down um, different molecules that accumulate in your body so you can flush them out otherwise you get cancers you get chronic diseases, you get inflammation, you get 
fibrosis, scar tissues. And in your heart, once you get a scar tissue, that's it. That, that part of the heart is never going to work again. Case closed. That's what they say. Now, in my work with the new atomic model called electron flood theory, they know that the, the nucleus of the atoms are completely wrong. They know this is wrong, and they just don't know what to do. I do. The atoms, that the nucleus of every atom is made of electrons. Electrons are dipoles. I've gone over this many, 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 many times. There's a strong force and a weak force. And they're black and white. They look exactly like this. You see that? That's what a photon looks like when it's coming through the air. I see them in green and I see them in red. And that's the exact identical same structure. When it hits in a venturi, which is this, that photon explodes. And I have these in actual physical pictures, but this makes it a little easier. That's the red laser. It's, it accelerates hitting the venturi, explodes at the venturi. Then you get the fermion white, extremely brilliant f flares of particles, which are so excited that they push the black fermion, the black boson, away from the fermion. When they concuss, they separate. I'll show you this. Electron is half of a photon. Photons are that. All right, now... Understanding the chemistry of atomic, well, understanding the atomic nucleus, then you can understand the chemistry. Because now the chemistry becomes elegant. Because even in helium, instead of having two protons and two neutrons in the center, you've got 7,350 electrons. You can, now you have isotopes. That's how you could, the only way you, they can justify isotopes. There's so many isotopes on many, many, many of these atoms that they just know where they can justify them with just a couple of electrons, and I mean a couple of neutrons and a couple of protons. It just doesn't work. So anyway, we're going to get into gene expression. And once the gene is expressed, that's not just, it, it just happens. Now you call on a bacteria. The gene gets methylated, turned on. And what is methylation? There's what they call the CPG islands. CPG islands. See them down here? That's the memory. That's the, that's the program code island. Now, the program code's there, but if you don't have the bacteria to make the molecule, you're done. Simple as that. So they Im immediately say, oh, well, you have a problem with your genes. No, you don't. You have a problem with the digestive enzymes, the, the proteins that are made by the codes that reside in these CPG islands. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of different little program places. That's your junk DNA. 98% of the codes in your body, they have no clue about because your codes are going to be different than mine. That's why they see no sequence there. That's because your memories are different than mine. Your reactions are different than mine. Your trigger points are different than mine. Your, your ability to deal with things is probably a lot better than mine. <laughs> you know, I, at some point, you know, your mind is a part of this too. It's not just your body falling apart. Your mind can break apart too. So, these CPG islands are where methylation has to happen, and that locks these codes in. Well, if, you, if they could be methylated, you could be fine. But once you send out the, the program, if the guy's not there to receive the program, you're done. This case is closed. And the enzymes are made by bacteria. The bacteria are there because you didn't kill them with antibiotics. That's the bottom line. Okay, here's what we're going to be talking about is epigenetics. And in biology, epigenetics is a study of heritable changes that do not involve changing the DNA sequence. You're just turning things on and off when they're necessary. So if you're being evaded, you need to turn on certain genes. And that's called methylation. 
So epigenetics most often involves changes that affect gene activity and expression. That's where we're going next, gene activity and expression. And it's by these little methyl groups. You see that little methyl group being attached to a certain spot on this enormous, gigantic, huge, forever running coil of chemistry, basically. Now, if you have one of these methylation groups in there, it's going to turn on whatever the code is right there. And there's, it's just a bazillion, trillion, zillion, gazillion times that squared plus 10. I mean, it's just unbelievable how much code is in your body. Now, when you need to turn them on, they need to be methylated. If they are methylated, then that sequence of code goes out into your bloodstream. And that sequence of code ends up has, having an address and going down to a certain white blood cell, let's say, in this case, that has to go into a certain bacteria and hand them that, that program and say, here, here's the program, make this molecule. And then they start making them, and they just squirt them out until that molecule is no longer necessary, and then it just stops. It's the most elegant system done. And these are the, every one of these chunks is a chunk of program, chunk, 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 and it's a, there's a hundred bazillion trillion of them. Well, you know, I mean, maybe not that many quite, but pretty close. There are just you just are saturated with programs, saturated, and. And now, with electron flood theory and understanding how much additional chemistry there is that they never took into account before, it's uh, it puts it on a light year scale. I'm just, just way over the top now. Now, you see this? This is what that these enzymes are squirting out of bacteria. You just squirt it out like a. It's, not, it's absolutely unbelievable the complexity of these molecules. These are enzymes and they can be created just like that by bacteria. <laughs> you can't create them. We can't create these things. Otherwise if we could, you know, we might be able to clone them and, and culture them into growing because they are bacteria that create these. These are the pro final product. This is the enzyme. The bacteria, though, squirt these enzymes out. All right, you see the complexity of these, what they call genes and gene expressions and these DNA program codes, and that's what they are. And if you don't have the program, you're in trouble. But most people have the programs. It's just when the program is executed, you have to have the workers out there to create the bacteria. I mean, the bacteria out there who are the workers to create the enzymes. If they're not there, you, I don't care how much program you got, you, you got nothing to, to, coming out the other end. Okay, I couldn't say it any better than my friend Go Call at Caltech. He says, your textbooks are wrong. This is what cells actually look like. I would have continued on, your textbooks are wrong about everything. And then, on top of that, this is what cells actually look like. Now, let's see what he has to say. And I'm going to, this is exactly what happens inside these white blood cells. There's bacteria that could create those elegant looking uh, programs, which are the proteins, which are the enzymes. If you don't have the bacteria, you don't create them. And he, you are going to see them created just like that. And you saw the complexity of those proteins and those enzymes. I mean, think about it. Just give it some thought from my hands just stood up. It's a microscopic universe within each cell. In each this cell. This is an unprecedented view of the cellular world where we... These, this is, right here is like a white blood cell. Now there's all different types. Some of them affect pathogens that invade you and they create the, the toxins or whatever they have to create here, these enzymes, to go out and kill them. This is one that just got created. It's going to get squirted out. Another one is going to get created over here in a second, just like that. And these are so complex that they do catalytic conversions of molecules so fast, it would take literally hundreds of years to do if it was done in a natural process. Now watch this. 
Articles. You can actually see immune Boom. cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish in real time. Boom, out it goes. only on the crawling immunes. All right, I mean, this is, and, and he's right. Go call is right. This is all different. This is um, UC Berkeley. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know where I said before. Uh, Caltech, maybe I said. But there, everybody now is starting to come around and starting to to look at things a whole way different. But it's a, such a slow process in academia because everybody has a position to defend. Now, this guy... I think looks for answers. This is called Seeker. I believe this is what we're looking at now. Hold on. Okay, my friends, this is really quite serious. This is about gut dysbiosis and detection of live gut bacteria. And they're looking at it in Japanese patients with type 2 diabetes. And all of these different researchers are, have a hand in this. And what they have discovered is the exact same thing I've discovered, that the gut dysbiosis is... It was assessed a high rate of gut bacteria in the circulation suggestion translocation of bacteria from the gut to the bloodstream. And this is the different, exact different types of bacteria. High counts of this, low counts of that. Now, we can get this, and I'm telling you right now, you can be literally cured, I believe, from even diabetes with gut bacteria, and I think pretty quickly. All right, so this is something we really, really, really need to look into. I've been, as far as I could determine, there's nothing that doesn't have a gut bacteria signature. So if you have COPD, or you have asthma, or you have diabetes, or you have liver disease, or whatever happens to be, put it in and say, and gut bacteria and microbiome and you'll see that it'll say here's what happens when you have that disease no it's when you have the gut problem you get that disease